for you. All right, this is our second YouTube video made within like five minutes after our first one. As you can see, we have two ponds. These are very small water garden type ponds. Yesterday, we dug the holes for both of these. We already had the pond pumps. Um, and we had purchased this prefabricated uh, pond liner at um, a local home improvement store. We already owned this prefabricated pond liner. Now, if you wish to do your own pond and you want to save money and make your own pond liner, you could go to your local, you know, small hardware store or family dollar or Dollar Tree and buy garbage bags and basically dig a hole, seal the hole with garbage bags and duct tape. Um, if you're concerned that there might develop a hole in the bag, you could strengthen the bag with maybe some flex seal or whatnot. Uh, you could use a tarp. Now in our case, we use these plastic, black plastic prefabricated uh, pond liners, basically. These have a hard shell. So as you can see, we have a pump going in this pond um, or this water garden. This, I decided to turn on the pumps despite knowing that there was dirt in the water because I did not want the water to stand even for 24 hours without moving, uh, which is a breeding ground for mosquitoes. So as you can see, this pond pump is running. I'm going to unplug it because it is in need of a filtration system of some kind. Um, this will help cl clear the water. Obviously, when I stick my hand in here, I'm only down maybe three or four inches, and you can barely see my hand because of the dirt that entered the water as we were digging the hole and setting the pond down in there. In fact, as I stick my hand in the pond and pull it back out and pull out a rock, there's dirt on my fingers sitting on the bottom of this pond. So, I'm going to pull out the pump. This is a very tiny pond pump. As you can see, there's already some dirt where the water inlet is, which is not good. I need to get that dirt and that sediment out or else I could burn up this pump. So this is a good thing I've decided to do this today. Um, and it's not coming out. Let's see if I can get it out with this little twig. Yep, it looks like a leaf. Yep, it's a leaf. So that little leaf could have really clogged this, this water pump and damaged it. Luckily, the water pump was still getting water through it, so I don't think it's damaged. It looks clean on the inside. So we are going to build a homemade filter for this, for this pump. Now, as you can see, the water inlet for this little pump um, is only maybe a quarter inch in diameter, maybe a half inch in diameter. And so um, you want, when the water's entering this pump, to be able to enter in multiple places, not just this tiny hole. So this filter right here is a pool filter, and this is mesh tape used for maybe drywall when you're uh, putting up spackle. I bought this for a pool that we no longer have, one of those easy setup pools. And this little filter fits nicely on the end of the water inlet. So I am, for double safety, I'm going to cut off a little piece of this polyester batting. This is batting that's used for making quilts that goes inside the quilt. So I cut off a little piece, and as you can see, I'm going to cover the end. And the reason why is I don't want anything to get into this pump. Any sort of sediment or that leaf I just pulled out could be very dangerous for this pump and could damage it. So I'm surrounding this inlet with duct tape. I do have zip ties. I suppose I could just zip tie it. Now that I have some duct tape on there, I'll just zip tie it. However, I am concerned that once I put the zip tie on here, I might not be able to fit that filter on, but we'll see. 
Or maybe I should have put a larger piece on. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just cut a larger piece. Instead of that tiny piece. And I'll zip tie this piece on to the end of this filter. I think that should work better. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, as you can see, the end of the filter is covered, so I can prevent bad things from going into the filter, any sort of debris or sediment. Now hopefully, with this on, it'll still fit inside this filter. And with a little bit of elbow grease and strong pushing, it does still fit. So, just for safety measure, I am going to duct tape this filter onto the pump itself and hope that it holds this little pool filter onto this pump. Now, what I just did does not have to be done, but I would highly recommend that you put some sort of cylinder type filtration system onto the end of a pond filter such as this so that you don't have that quarter inch hole being the only inlet in for the water. So as you can see, I've covered this, and I'm going to also potentially cover, fill in that hole. Let's use that piece that I had right here, and I'm just going to also stick this inside the middle. Maybe I'll cut off some more and stick this right, as you can see, into the middle of the filter. So we'll just stick that in there. So we know that there's plenty of uh, filtration before anything even enters this pump. Okay, so now, now we have the pump. I'm going to do, I guess I only have to do one layer. I was gonna put two layers of this batting around it, but now I don't think that I have to because we already have one layer between this filter and uh, the, the, batting that's inside the middle. I think that's already our first layer. So I'm just going to cut off a piece and we're going to go around the filter with this piece, this pool filter. And so as you can see, I'm going to, didn't quite make it exactly large enough, but we'll make it work. all the way around. Now again I didn't cut necessarily the as long of a piece as we needed but that's okay. Um, so in any aquarium particularly when you first start the aquarium you need this stuff and this comes in any sort of filter that you buy for your fish aquarium. This is carbon. It's activated carbon pellets basically this captures the, uh, the nitrates um, and the bad chemicals you don't want in a fish aquarium. So our plan for these two ponds is to possibly put fish in both of them. We will see what happens in the next few days to see if we can get the water to clear. And maybe, maybe a month from now they'll be ready to have fish uh, put inside of them. We will see. But anyway, so I'm going to put this carbon pellets kind of inside this filter and as you can see it's kind of surrounding the filter which is exactly what we want and you know I may zip tie just the end here Let's see if I have another zip tie um, I could have just duct taped the end and wrapped it like uh, a candy wrapper at the end of say a Tootsie Roll 
but I think that's what I'm going to do. So we will just kind of duct tape this, or I mean zip tie this in. Okay, and I may zip tie, since I didn't use a big enough piece, I may zip tie one more around the filter itself, the pool filter that is. Should have cut a bigger piece so we didn't have that crack right there, but it doesn't have to fully be sealed because we already have one layer of batting uh, surrounding it. And now this is almost functioning as a second layer. Okay, I think we're good to go. As you can see, this pond pump, pond pump is uh, completely covered. We're still losing some, uh, some of the carbon. Let me tighten this up more at the end here. We'll even put another layer of... Uh, another zip tie on, or maybe, yeah, another zip tie will do it. So, hopefully within 24 hours, this layer of batting will have caught most of the sediment that's within the pond. Now, I will have to, this, this work I just showed you just now, I will have to replace all of this batting and do this a second time because this batting, this filter material will, will clog up the filter once it's full of sediment. So this may be another process I have to do 24 hours from now potentially. But again, I have plenty of carbon. I have plenty of batting. Although I am getting low on zip ties. But we will cut these. Okay, this filter is ready to go. I will submerge this. And hopefully, within 24 hours, all the dirt or sediment that is now in that little water garden will be trapped by that outer layer of batting. Um, and I will replace that outer layer with a new layer, which should be good probably for the entire summer, I would think, after um, capturing the dirt that's in the pond now, provided that no more dirt gets in there. Now you do see the dirt at the edge of this little water garden. A heavy rain obviously would bring in more dirt. And again, if, if that happens, I will just have to put in, you know, a fresh layer of batting around that pump. Also, I want you guys to notice that I, um, I don't have a fountain in either one of these ponds. The reason I don't have a fountain is when we had a pond here before, we had a fountain, and occasionally, especially during a heavy windy day, the water from the fountain would shoot out onto the ground. Um, and eventually that happened so much that the pond went dry, the water flowed underneath the liner and lifted the whole uh, pond up out of the dirt here. So I'm going to avoid um, purchasing a fountain for these two little small water gardens. Although I do have something coming that is a solar powered fountain for that one because it's larger. I'm hoping that once I put it in, the fountain does not flow the water outside of the little water garden. Um, and, well that's it. If uh, this gives you guys some ideas on how to uh, build your own small water garden or small pond, that would be great if you could like the video. And that's it.